What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Today's reaction video is six reasons American English actually makes sense. Okay. Interesting. I mean, the thing is, we are, well, at least I'll, I'll speak for myself, I, I think you're the same thing. We, we generally don't care which one you use. <laughs> so, you don't uh, have to persuade us, Launch. You don't have to persuade us. It doesn't bother me. Um, like, you guys use different words. Hey, yo, if we all mean the same thing, if we all understand each other, who, who cares? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not a big deal. We say different things, you say different things. Uh, but some people will get annoyed by this. Some people, some people will be like... There's a correct way to say well, it. There's a correct way to say it. And some Americans will be like, there's a correct way to say it. it's the American English way. Some British people will be like, there's a correct way to say it. it's the English way. Yeah. And then there'll be those people that come along and say, it says English. So. Yeah, exactly. That'll be right. We generally do not care. But we're going to learn why Lance is trying to persuade the people who do care that American English actually makes sense. We've got an appearance from Ted, even though you can't, can't see, see him. Ted. And we'll bring him. Across here. Oh, hello. We are dog sitting, which is what Ted over there. The, cam Ted. the, cam the camera's over there, mate. You see it? Oh, yeah. Um, we're dog sitting, aren't we? We are. We are dog sitting. So there you go, Ted. Back to there. Um, yeah, we're dog sitting, which is why we're in this location and so that, which you probably, I don't know when this video is going out. We're trying to prove it. It's a long time, I think. This yeah. Video. So this might be the only time you see Ted. He's, he's stood right <laughs> here. Um, but as we're recording this, four weeks ago, to September 29th. The baby might be even here by the time this this is like on the list for like mid September towards the end towards the end of September. So well, we'll see if that actually happens. If we don't pre-record it, we're going out earlier. But if it goes out when we schedule it, uh, the baby potentially could be here. We obviously will do the announcement, but we are pre-recording. So check out our Patreon; it does really help us out. Smash the like button, smash the subscribe button. You ready to get into it? I am. Let's get into it. Six reasons American English actually makes sense. What we got. Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to English. Yep. If you can understand the words that I'm saying now, that means you have at least a decent grasp of English and Lawrence speak. For one person's English, whether that be vocabulary, spelling or pronunciation, might not be the same as your English. Yep. And often differences like this lead people I mean, to... Is as well. This is just how messed up the English language is. We're both from Eng well, you're from Jersey, we're both from Britain. We say words completely different at times. Mm -hmm. Like bath. Bath. Grass. Gr grass. <laughs> yeah, no, dude, we would have done it. Like it's a trick question. No, no, it's not. I'm just in my head I was thinking we actually say pronounce things differently. Mm -hmm. And we're both meant to technically speak the same English, if that makes yeah. sense. But I'm Northern, so I say wrong, <laughs> obviously. obviously. To be suspicious of the other person's English, to somehow think, if only in a jovial manner, that their brand of English is inferior to mine. A common example of this, I have to concede, is when some of my fellow Brits like to criticise or poke fun at American English. And I have to admit, when I was younger, I was one of those Brits. But then I went to university and two things happened. One, I interacted with American students. Okay. And two, I did a useless degree in linguistics and took a module on English varieties. And after that, my mind was open. <laughs> American degree. English wasn't wrong. It was fascinating. It's a variety it's of English yeah. whose story has often been lost to time. Because just as there are countless fascinating histories behind the words we use in Britain, the same is also true of the United States. Okay. And so I'm without ready. further ado, here are six reasons that American English is wrong. The longer that I do this channel, the more examples I discover of words or language concepts that we perceive to be American but actually originated in Britain. And on this okay. subject I've talked extensively about soccer, soccer yeah. and aluminum, but I think my favourite example is the word herb. To us yes. Brits, hearing Americans drop the H on the word herb can often feel weird. But here's the thing, back in the day we used to do it. There was a slew of words that entered the English language via Old French that incorporated a silent H. This included honour, hour, hors d'oeuvre, and yes, herb. But Brits just stopped pronouncing it herb in, I want to say, the 19th century because it was soon considered the way commoners spoke and the upper classes can't be having that. And so eventually, in Britain, it was dropped altogether and America, on the other side of the ocean, didn't get the memo. Okay. And when it comes to this, there are actually two other things that make us Brits a little bit hypocritical when judging the American pronunciation of herb. Firstly, we're forever dropping H's. I mean, I don't know if you've noticed, but recently I've had an haircut. That's northern for haircut. Yeah. And second... <laughs> Which is what I say. But yeah, think about it. Right? I was just trying to think of words in my head. Hour. What hour? hour. You don't say hour. Do we? we don't say hour. What hour. Um, like you said, he said honour before. We don't say honour. No. Herb. We say herb. 
So it yeah. does make sense. Her. It actually makes more her. sense to talk. No, jo- we say hair. What? We say H for hair. Yeah, we say H for hair. But there's a lot of words where we drop it. Yeah. And we used to drop it. So why not? Even though it just kind of, uh, for some reason, gives me like a farmer's accent in the UK. Yeah, it does. It gives me like a Jersey, a proper Jersey accent. Yeah, a Jersey accent or like a farmer's accent up north. But then like, or like that. most of the Jersey people... Like were farmers, like that's why they were farmers. Accent... Jersey, Jersey potatoes yeah. and stuff like that. And that for some reason, when I hear it without the H, I think of a farmer. Just in the UK, in America, it might be different with an American accent. But just because I'm used to herb, when I hear herb, mm. I, j- I just hear like a... like a farming accent in the UK. Mm-hmm. And Lee, before we start handing out diktats on how to pronounce the letter H, some would suggest we might want to learn how to pronounce the word H. Some, not me. I'm open to multiple interpretations. But the fact remains that in a dictionary, H. the word H ends in an H, but it doesn't start with one. Oh, and while we're on the subject of pronunciation, that brings us on to this. You know, in Britain, we're sometimes very quick to judge the way in which Americans pronounce words, maybe because it's so markedly different from the way we do. But this hasn't always been the case now, has it? Because as many of my subscribers have asked me over the years, Lawrence, is it true that features of American English are similar to the way in which people spoke in England in the 1600s? To some degree, yes. A good example of this is that back then, most of Britain would have pronounced the R in words like card. That linguistic phenomenon is known as roticity and and is a large feature, of course, of American English today. Okay. In Britain... Card. Do card. I... Do we say the R? Card. I'm going to go pick up the card. I'm going to get yeah, a birthday card. Because if I, yeah, I feel, like, I feel like I can hear the R. I feel like I can hear the R. Because like, if I'm thinking about at school, we teach the children how to spell, yeah. I would say card. Okay. R as in A-R. Okay. I, I, yeah. Card, say it. Card. I'm going to go pick up a birthday card. I don't know here. if I can hear it or if I just know there's an R. Yeah, there's an R. I think it would be... Let us know in the comments. I feel like I can hear it. I feel like I know. can hear it. <laughs> I think we can. And it still survives in pockets, like in the southwest of England and also Scotland, but it's ceased to be a feature of British English in most other parts. <laughs> Obviously, one of the big differences between our two forms of English is the way in which we spell words. Yeah. And maybe because most of American English derive from its British equivalent, we in Britain feel almost duty-bound to voice our disapproval of how Americans spell words. But I feel like we have to be careful about that because there is, in fact, quite an orderly nature to a lot of American English spelling rules. You know, I used this example the other day. If you're ever confused as to why Americans use the suffix I-Z-E as opposed to I-S-E, then two things. That's not always the case, because secondly, American English likes to distinguish between words that came from Greek and have the suffix I-Z-E, and words that came from Old French that have the suffix I-S-E. So in American Mm. English, for every internalize, you also have exercise. In Britain, we tend to not make this distinction whether the word came from Old French or Greek. It usually ends in I-S-E, and to me, I'm perfectly fine. Except size. Size is in Z-E, yeah. We spell size with a Z-E. Exercise. Is S-E. Yeah, ooh. Ooh, but the size of something we spell with a Z. Z E, there we go. Good thinking. What is wrong with us? I don't know, which is weird. By the way, if you can hear snoring. <laughs> they can't, I don't think. That is a dog. I don't know, but <laughs> it's super loud. We've got a box here as well. You saw it at the start of the video. There's a couple of the dogs here as well. <laughs> Moo is snoring, just stay, giving us a stare now. She snores when she's awake. She's just staring and it was like, yeah, that's right. I'm snoring. <laughs> so I do apologise. <laughs> and with this as well. Additionally, we like to be puzzled as to why Americans drop the U in words like colour and honour. But the truth is, we actually did the initial change. Because in Old French, from which words like this derive, the words colour and honour were spelled just as they are now in an American dictionary. One charge that I often hear get levelled at American English is that it doesn't have many kind of fantastical words like Britain does. But having lived here for as long as I have, and crucially having done this channel, I've learned that America has coined some absolutely gorgeous words, some of which are used only in the United States, some of which are now archaic, and some of which actually made it to the rest of the English-speaking world. So these words include snollygoster, cattywampus, fuddy-duddy, wangdoodle, pulchritudinous, humdinger, doohickey, valedictorian... Okay, I've heard of humdinger. Uh, What's that one? Don't be like such a humdinger. Wampus, fuddy-duddy, wangdoodle... I've heard of that in Child and Chocolate Factory. Wang do? What does that mean? It was like a 
berry or something that they wow. licked or sweet or something. Wow. Yeah, I've never heard that. Um, no, Pulchritudinus. Humdinger. Humdinger, I've heard of. Demi likes a humdinger, I think, isn't it? Like a... No idea. I've never heard of that. I think I'm miserable, I think. Or like a bit down. Please let us know the description of these. I think humdinger is like a bit more of it. Don't be such... Oh, you're bringing like the excitement level mm. down or something like that. I may be that. wrong, but let us know. Doohickey, Valedictorian, do Lollapalooza, so Valedictorian Ornery. Valedictorian is like a big word for um, in schools. Oh, okay. Like okay, it, there you go. Secondary schools. Poppycock is about like the uh, popcorn or something like that. I suppose you've seen like the popcorn poppycock. No, I do. <laughs> no, poppycock, not that. a British word. Malarkey, cahoots, Malarkey. discombobulate, panhandle, conniption, and highfalutin. Okay, a few we know. Wow. Now, sometimes, every now and again, I'll be on Twitter, which was my first mistake, and someone will gain a lot of traction simply by saying, I hate the way Americans say soccer, it's football. Now, I'm not going to go over the fact again that the word soccer was in fact coined in Britain. Instead, I'm going to highlight a fact that many people just seem to forget, and that is that soccer isn't unique to American English. The word is used in Canada, South Africa, Australia, Ireland, and occasionally England. Between you and me, it's time we stop caring about this. Especially since us Brits have been it using American like, English so all long our now, lives. Like... <laughs> Everyone you see, the knows thing is, the means. English language has a plethora of words that were coined in the United States. Sadly, plethora wasn't one of them. In addition to the hundreds, if not thousands, of technological words that the country has given us, it's also added gimmick, hangover, okay. hassle, fudge, hindsight, lengthy, belittle, okay, and hello to name a few. Wow. Language I is. I know all of them. All of them we know, which is good yeah. compared to the list. I didn't realize they gave us hello though. I didn't. Maybe we just said hi before. And I was like, no, no, Maybe. be a bit more posh and say hey. hello. Hey. No, that sounds very American. Yeah, sounds quite American. It's ever evolving, and whether we're talking about British, American, Australian, Canadian, or New Zealand English, so long as we understand each other, that's all that matters. True. Could you understand me throughout that? Right. Well, we'll we'll do some retakes. That's it for this episode. Let oh, me know. Oh, if... good. I enjoy lots of the pom video. Yeah, I do. Hopefully, you guys did as well. If you did, smash the button, smash the subscribe, and check out Patreon. Because like we said, the baby potentially is here, potentially not. We don't know. You guys will be updated when it does. We'll do a stream when the baby's here on a Friday. And um, and then, yeah, it's pretty yeah. much it, isn't it? Smash the like button, guys. Smash the subscribe button. Watch the video. Have a fantastic and day. And we'll see you, legends, in the next one. Peace.